Hi, fifth graders. Today we're going to talk about something called a water footprint. Um, so just for a moment, I want you to think of all the ways that you use water during the day. Um, so for example, uh, my favorite drink is water. I have water all the time. I constantly have water next, a glass of water next to me because I drink a lot of it. Um, your clothes, your clothes have to be washed by water. If you have a swimming pool, you fill that swimming pool with water. Um, as you walk by the sink, again, you probably get a glass of water. Maybe you help to wash the dishes, either you load the dishwasher or you wash them uh, by hand. If you don't use the dishwasher, again, you're using water. Um, to wash, you use water. Uh, so we are constantly using water without giving it, a, giving it much thought. Occasionally, uh, you know, the grown up at home might say, try to use a little bit less water, try to conserve water. Sometimes you might um, read articles or maybe you've seen shows about how in some parts of the world, uh, water is not that easy to get. People have to get it in different ways. Um, long, long time ago, even people in this country had to walk to get their water or had to, um, you know, have a well in, and walk out to their well in order to get the water. So basically what I'm saying is we kind of take water for granted. And um, what we're going to do today, you're going to watch a couple of videos about something called the water footprint. Um, I'm going to teach you what the water footprint is. You can probably get a pretty good idea of what the water footprint is based on what I was just saying. And then you're going to chart your water footprint. You're going to um, use a chart in your digital notebook. Uh, I believe it's slide 10 to chart the amount of water you use. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. So what is a water footprint? What is your water footprint? So first, what is a water footprint? The amount of fresh water used in the production or supply of the goods and services used up by a particular person or group. So a lot of water goes into doing the things that you do. So for example, water is used for you before you even know it um, in the production of goods and services. So let's say, for example, you, you go out to a grocery store and you buy bottles of water. Well, that's what, that is one of them. How about the fruit that you eat? Well, water is used it to um, not only help that fruit grow, but also to clean the fruit once it's ready to go out to market. So water is used there. Um, the, it's just stay sticking with the grocery store. Uh, you don't wanna walk into a dirty grocery store. So the grocery store is using water in order to clean the grocery store to make it nice so that when you go or, you're, or the grown up in your house goes that um, it's all set for you. Uh, when your the grown up in your house takes their car for a car wash, water is being used. So it's used in the production or supply of the goods and services used by a particular person or group. Maybe uh, you've had your house or home power washed. Um, maybe you've you've mopped your floor today. Wow, all of those things, all of those things require water. So that's your water footprint, the water that is used by a group or a person for uh, the goods and services that are used. Um, there are three types of water in the water footprint. There's blue water. That's the amount of surface water. We talked about surface water last week. Remember, surface water is water that we can see on the surface, rivers, lakes, uh, oceans, streams, um, evaporated or used directly to produce an item. So the surface water that we use from the rivers, from the streams, from the lakes, uh, that is called blue water. And then there's the green water footprint, the amount of rainwater required, evaporated or used directly to make an item. So the amount of rainwater. So green water, you think of green, you think of the environment. It comes from the environment. Green water is the amount of rainwater required. The amount of rainwater we need in order to be able to use that surface water. Because remember the surface water comes from the rainwater. And then we have gray water. The gray water footprint is, is, is huge. So the so gray water footprint, the amount of fresh water required to dilute wastewater 
generated in manufacturing in order to maintain, maintain water quality as determined by state or local standards. So gray water is like, for example, when you run a dirty load of wash, all right, that water is now gray water. You don't want to drink directly from your dirty wash load in the, wa in the, dish, in the, um, in the clothes washer. It's also something like the dishwasher. Well, you start with all those yucky dishes that you put in the dishwasher, and that is gray water. Gray water is the water that, that drains out of there that is not clean, all right? If you think about um, water from showers, for example, from the shower at your house, you start out dirty, you get clean. Well, that dirty water is now gray water, and that has to be cleaned again in order to go back into the water system to be used for drinking or washing. So we have blue water, that's the surface water. That's the footprint we use from the surface water. Then we have the gray water or green water. That is the water from the sky, the rain, the snow that, about, that melts. And then we have gray water. That's the dirty water after we clean something or somebody, All right? So today you're going to chart your personal water footprint. All right, you're gonna spend a day doing that and you might have to go back in the day and think about some of the things from this morning that you did. So I'll rely on your good fifth grade memories to do that. So your personal water footprint is the amount of water you use each day. So we're going to measure it in liters. When you think about liters, think about a typical uh, water bottle, which is a perfect example because we're talking about water today. That is a liter of water. So if you have a water bottle in your hand right now, or you have one somewhere in your house, that's about a liter of water. That's what we're going to measure it in. That's the metric measurement for um, liquid measuring. Um, my water foot footprint assignment, this is on, I believe it's on slide 10 of your digital notebook, which you are going to do this week. You're going to chart this. So take a look, you can, you can read just as easily as I can. You're gonna chart your, your water footprint for one day, all right? So again, you might have to go back or since not everything is due until the end of the week, it's okay. Um, you can chart it tomorrow, it's up to you. So as you can see, we have different activities, uh, brushing teeth, washing hands, hope you're doing that a lot these days, or face, shower, bath, toilet flush. Yes, I want you to count the amount of times you flush the toilet today. Please flush it each time. Um, dishwasher. And you might have to ask a grown up for that information. Washing clothes, all right? Drinks. So throughout the day today, or again, if it's too hard to remember, you can do this tomorrow as long as it's finished uh, for later in the week. I want you to chart afternoon, evening, morning, all right? I know that's kind of out of order, but it probably is the afternoon if you're, if you're watching this at the normal time. So I want you to think, how many times you do each of these things throughout the day, chart it, all right? So if you think about washing your hands as an example, the second one there, maybe you can think back to the morning, okay, maybe when you first woke up, you washed your hands and then maybe you used the bathroom, you washed your hands, all right? So I want you to think back to the morning about how many times did you wash your hands? And then, and you know what, if you're off by one, it's really okay. Um, because it, it, could, it can vary from day to day. In the afternoon, how many times did you wash your hands or face? In the evening, how many times did you wash your hands or face? And then it says the estimated amount of water used in liters is three liters each time. You use three liters each time. So if we have a total of, let's say we've washed our hands and face 10 times throughout the day. All right, you can use tally marks in the boxes or you can use just uh, whole numbers. So let's say you wash 10 times. Well, the math behind that, hopefully you know that by now, is 10 times three. So that would be 30 liters of water under total water used. Um, did you get a shower today or a bath? And if you did, if you get a shower and who knows, maybe you took two, I don't know. So uh, that would be 75 times two. Or did you take a bath today instead? 136, wow, you might not have known that, but you actually use more water in a bath than a shower. Um, so that, let's say you took one bath, 136 times one. 
put that in the total waters used. Um, and the fun one, toilet flushes. How many times have you gone to the bathroom today? Strange question, all right? But you're going to chart it. Don't worry, nobody else is gonna see this except for you and your teacher. Um, so you're going to chart your flushes. So if you're thinking back, you can try to think how many times you flush the toilet today. I'm not saying flush it three times every time you use it just to, to bulk up your numbers. I really want you to try to be as accurate as possible. So let's say you realize you flush, you flush the water, you have the water five times today. So that would be five times the 10 liters, which would be 50. Okay, you get the idea here. And oh, let me go down to dishwasher and washing clothes. So ask a grown up in your house, or maybe you actually do it by now. You should be doing it pretty soon if you don't do it already. But maybe um, you can ask a grown up, how many loads of wash did you run today? And then they will say one, or they might say two, or they might say none today. Um, so chart the amount of wash loads, all right? Not just if clothes were washed, how many loads of wash do they do today? So let's say um, somebody at home says they've done two loads of wash. That would be times 100, that would be 200 liters of water. And then finally, this is just for, for you. Okay, the, the wash load, obviously your whole family's involved there. That's okay. I want you to include that for the drinks, for the shower, for the bath, for the hand washing, just you, not your whole family. That would just be uh, kind of out of control with the math. So drinks, how many drinks did you have? And you might think, well, I had a water. Well, then I had a Gatorade. Well, Gatorade is also, there also it takes water in order to make that liquid. So that counts as well. Did you have a soda? Hope not. But if you did, that's water as well. So for each drink, it's one fourth of a liter. So let's say throughout the day you had eight drinks. Well, eight fourths is two liters. All right. You, if you need help with that calculation, you can ask your homeroom teacher or um, somebody at home. And then I want you to total up the amount of liters that you used. So that's our assignment for today. That's gonna to take quite a bit of time to go through. Obviously, you won't be able to do it in one sitting. You'll have to just carry that chart around or at least mark tally mark somewhere and then come back to the, to the chart to fill it out. So it's all about understanding what the water footprint is. A water footprint is how much water is used um, in the production of goods or in services. And then we're going to chart our water footprint. How much water do we use throughout the day? Again, just you, not your whole family, except for the dishwasher, that can be family use, that's okay, and the clothes washing. So good luck with the activity, and we'll talk more about water footprints tomorrow.